Hello and welcome to my series on Pokemon Sun and Moon How to Competitive. Basically, the reason for this is I'm starting to get into competitive, competitive battling as far as getting perfect IVs, EV training my Pokemon, and kind of getting them ready for battle. So, I decided that I got a request um, to ask for help in how to do all this stuff, getting IVs and EV training and everything. So I decided, alright, I'm going to do a series and I'm going to start... This series will be a little longer than this, but for my first portion of this series, I'm going to do a little experiment. I'm going to take this Pokemon here that I want to train, a more lull. I want to get a, a tanky Shinotic, or Shinotic, however you pronounce its name. I'm really not sure. But this thing can be a pretty cool tanky Pokemon. I want to go ahead and try it out. I think it's got a pretty decent nature, but if you'll notice, its IVs are not that great. It says above average potential. It's it's not amazing. It's it's pretty blah. So what we want is to get a more lull that has perfect IVs and at least a few key stats. So the this is the first step in getting a really good competitive Pokemon is I mean, you can you can EV train any Pokemon, but usually the ones with perfect IVs are gonna do the best for you because you're just getting the maximum amount of points in stats that you possibly can. So first step is to get a Pokemon with perfect IVs. Now hyper training is an option, but it's really really inaccessible, and uh, I'd suggest you save it for Pokemon that you can't breed easily because for a vast majority of Pokemon you can breed them. And so this right here, this strategy of getting Ditto with perfect IVs is going to be the key for getting yourselves a perfect IV competitive Pokemon. Now, getting six perfect IVs is insanely difficult, but it's it's not too difficult. It's just a little bit of patience to get a five perfect IV Pokemon. But again, the first step is a perfect IV Ditto. Now, fortunately, with SOS chaining, you can get perfect IV Pokemon a bit easier. And the reason you want Ditto is because you can breed it with any Pokemon. So, now the thing is, chaining Ditto can be a bit of a, an annoyance. It transforms into your Pokemon and copies your stats. So let's say I have my Tapu Lele here that I usually use to do chaining, but this Ditto, a Ditto will transform and copy Tapu Lele stats, so it'll do good damage to us, and we'll have to keep healing, and then eventually it'll use up all its PP and... KO itself a struggle, because it only gets 5 PP of each move when it transforms, so it's a big mess. But now I found uh, somewhere on Reddit, and I wish I could give credit to this person, but I, I lost the page and I'm not sure who it was that did it. Um, the, if I find it, I'll put it in the description. But anyway, this is an amazing, such a simple method for SOS chaining Ditto. Um, and the main things you're going to need you're going to need a Munchlax. Now you can find these Munchlax on Route 1, no problem. You, But you want to make sure it knows Recycle. And you're probably going to need to go to a Move Tutor for that. Uh, I'm, or I guess, I think you can raise it up until it gets Recycle. But the main thing is you want Recycle to be the only move it knows. And again, you can get, um, you can get Munchlax on Route 1. They're fairly uncommon, but they're not super rare. Shouldn't be too hard to find one. So you want, alright, again, Munchlax with Recycle. And the next thing you're going to want is a Hypno, or really any Pokemon that can learn Switcheroo, I guess. But I'm not sure if there are any other Pokemon in in Alola that learn Switcheroo. This is the one that I was told to use. So you can get uh, Wild Hypno on Pony Plains, or if you have a Drowsy that you evolved, you can use that as well. You want to have it have Switcheroo. Now you might have to move Tutor this move on. We'll Maybe. The other thing that is that you want this Hypno to be holding a, I believe it's a Lepaberry. Oh, I think I just took the, I just think I just took the item off. I thought it wasn't holding it anymore. Let me check. Anyway, either way, you want it to be holding a Lepaberry, if I can find it. I know I have, yeah, here, oh yeah, right here. Okay, so a Lepaberry is a, an item that restores 10 PP to a Pokemon's move, and... It it's basically works just like ethers and elixirs. The difference is it's a berry, so a Pokemon can use it if it's holding it. So anyway, you're gonna want Hypno to hold this Lepaberry. So let's put these Pokemon on our team. The last thing you're gonna want is a hard hitting Pokemon that can KO other Pokemon the lower level Pokemon pretty easy. Plus a Pokemon with a move like False Swipe or whatever that won't that that can uh, 
lower the Pokémon's HP, and get it into SOS range without knocking it out. So I have a few options here. Um, I have my Tapu Lele and Tapu Fini, both with Nature's Madness, and I have Scyther with False Swipe. Basically, I have all three of these guys, just so I have options depending on how long the chain goes. Um, and that's, that's about it as far as what Pokémon you need. We're gonna go here, I'm at the... I'm at the... Battle Royal se section here. So the Munchlax is gonna want to be up front. Now, a couple of the things you're gonna want for this is you're going to want at least one Adrenaline Orb. Let me go... I need to go and find it. You're gonna want at least one Adrenaline Orb. Let me organize this by name. I'm pretty sure it's in this. Yeah, you're gonna want at least one Adrenaline Orb, and then you're gonna want some item like an Antidote or a Full Restore or something. Something that you, you can use on a Pokémon to have it not have any effects, because sometimes you're gonna just want to waste turns while you're waiting for a Pokémon to call for help. And if you use an item like a Full Heal on a Pokémon that's not, doesn't have a status condition, it'll fail, and it also won't use up the item, but it will use up your turn. So you can use that to your advantage in this case. Now, I don't think there's anything else I'm missing. You're gonna want Pokeballs, obviously. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna do that. Well, another thing that I, I like to have is to keep track of your chain, I have um, this, this uh, counter app here. You don't need to because you can really just keep track of how much PP is depleted on your Pokemon to, uh, to, to keep track of how many Pokemon you've been chaining. That is an equally good strategy, but I just have this as another option just so I can keep track in real time. So we're gonna fly to Mount Hokulani because this is where you want to go to chain for ditto. Now actually, actually what I'm gonna do, I don't want to start with Munchlax up front now that I think about it because I want to be able to run from anything that's not a ditto and Munchlax is low level and slow. But anyway, down M Mount Hokulani you're gonna go a little to the south here, and you're going to go with this grass grassy patch. So now you're going to need to find a ditto, of course. And if you know how SOS chaining works, then that's what you gotta do. But we run into a Fero, so we're gonna run away from that thing. And from what I've heard, in order to start getting ditto with perfect IVs, like basically each time you each time you continue the chain, you you're, the new Pokémon you find have increased odds of having things like hidden ability, perfect IVs, and being shiny. And now, I don't know if this has been absolutely confirmed, but what I've heard is that it takes about in the 40 to 50 range for your chain in order to start finding ditto that reliably have 3 to 4 perfect IVs. So, the 4 perfect IV ditto that I showed you guys was... Um, I think it, it was a chain of exactly 40, maybe 41, something like that. So I'm gonna try, once I find a ditto here, I'm gonna try and go for a chain of 50. I won't record the whole thing. I'm gonna see if I can go for a chain of 50. Um, I'm only running into Firo, it seems. It is usually not... It's usually not ridiculously difficult to find a ditto. However, you know, it's all a game of odds, and ditto is not the most common encounter here, so it might take a few tries. I might need to cut until we find a ditto, but we'll see. Come on, hopefully it be the next one. I hear a Firo's cry, though, in the overworld, so something tells me we're not done with Firo. I'm surprised we haven't even run into any mini or anything. Oh, there's a ditto! Okay, perfect. Alright, so now, the first thing you want to do... I put I have Tapu Lele up front because I want to be able to run away from things, but we're gonna go ahead and switch right now to Munchlax. Now, the way... Watch the way this works. It's gonna be awesome. So we're gonna switch to Munchlax. And the Ditto is going to transform into Munchlax. And now it has a Munch. Now you are facing a Munchlax that only has Recycle and only has five PP of Recycle. So now we don't want this thing to start struggling. So we're going to have to go and get. Oh, go ahead and switch into Hypno. And you can probably already see where this is going. We're going to switcheroo and place the place the Lepaberry onto this Ditto that's now a Munchlax. And so what's going to happen here is that it's going to only use Recycle because that's all it has. When its PP gets low enough, the Lepaberry is going to trigger and it will restore its PP. And then it'll use Recycle again because that's the only move it has 
and recycle will bring back the Lepaberry. So you have this never-ending chain of reusing recycle Lepaberry, recycle Lepaberry. So you never have to worry about this thing struggling and KOing and KOing you. You also never have to worry about you will let me rephrase that. You never have to worry about it struggling and KOing itself, and you also never have to worry about it KOing you, because again, Ditto copies whatever your stats are, and uh, it can do some serious damage. If it copies Tapu Lele, it's going to be doing serious damage to Tapu Lele. So now the next thing we want to do is get it into a range where it will want to call for help. So Nature's Madness is pretty good, because I can get it down by half. Usually if I use about two of them to get it into the yellow, we'll start, ca start calling for help. He can start calling for help a little bit earlier, but it's not really a hard and fast rule. It's all a game of odds. So yes, yeah, so he's gonna go for a cycle again. It failed, so now he's at like whatever three or two PP, and he's gonna record its recover its PP with the Lepa Berry, and the next time it recycles, it'll regain that Lepa Berry. But and now you can see already we have a chain of one. So I didn't even get to use my Adrenaline Orb yet, but I'm going to KO this Ditto. This other ditto. I'm gonna use extra sentry to keep track of my PP. I'm gonna KO this extra ditto and I'm gonna mark that as one here on my counter. Again, you can just keep track of PP. It's all the same. But I like having this up front. So you're gonna keep doing this. I have the experience share on, which might not be a great thing. I guess it doesn't matter. Okay, so now... Now, uh, he didn't call for help this time, so we could use Nature Nature's Madness again, but I want to go ahead and use an Adrenaline Orb. That just generally ups the chance that your Pokemon will call for the wild Pokemon you're facing will call for help. So, and there you go, it's going to call for help. But now help doesn't always appear, but it does this time. So we've got Ditto number two. And the last thing I want to show you guys before I cut away is... Again, what happens if you need to waste a turn? Okay, so we got number two on our chain. Again, I'm gonna try to go for 50 and see see how it goes with the with the ditto. Although if I run into a shiny before that, you know, all bets will be off, and I'll just have to either do a chain again another time or just make do. All right, so we get another ditto. So we're getting pretty lucky with these. Depending on what Pokemon you face, it might depend on the Pokemon because sometimes. I'll just be wasting turn after turn after turn, waiting for another SOS, like another one to call for help. Well, one that's really bad. I'll get to EV training later on, but I've, I've tried to EV train in special attack against Oricorio, and it would keep calling for help, calling for help, and no help would show up for turn after turn after turn, so I just have to really stall. But I'm gonna wait for... I'm just gonna keep going here until we get a turn where no help shows up, just so I can show you, in action, how to waste a turn. Okay, he's gonna go recycle again, and it failed, and now it's low enough PP that it used a Lepa Berry. And so the next turn- okay, so we didn't call for help this time. So now I'm gonna show you what you can do. You can use an Adrenaline Orb, again, to waste a turn. It won't- the effects of Adrenaline Orb don't stack, so you'll pretty much just be using it, but you do not use it up. So for this example I'm going to show you, I'm going to use an Antidote on Tapu Lele. We had, what, four of them? I should have paid more close attention to the number. But you'll be able to see the number doesn't change. You can use it as many times as you want. So Ditto's going to call for help again. And help didn't appear again. So now this time I'm going to use Nature's Madness, but I'm just going to go in here again to show Antidote... Five. Okay, so we had five before, we still have five now, so we're good. But this time I'm going to use Nature's Madness, because I believe if we get it more into the red, then it'll also have a higher chance of calling for help. Let's see. Didn't call for help again this time. So we're going to go ahead... I'm not sure if we get it even lower, if that'll increase the odds of it calling for help, but we're going to go ahead for it anyway. Just because you can. We're not going to need to save Nature's Madness. Like, you're not going to have to switch which Pokemon you're making weak. Like, normally when you chain, when you do SOS chaining, you're going to have to eventually switch which Pokemon you're targeting and which Pokemon you're keeping alive because they're going to run out of PP. But now with this system, you never have to worry about that because it will never run out of PP. Which, it's, it's a pretty ingenious system. Again, I'll try to find the person who um, posted it and post a link to the article in the description. But anyway, once again, nothing happens. So we're just going to use another antidote. 
And by another, I mean the same one that is that we won't use up. So it's gonna call for help again. And there is another ditto. So that puts four on our chain, on our ditto chain. So I'm gonna go ahead and attack that. And pretty much what you do is you just keep going. You do this, you keep going, and this, that's number four. You keep going until you get to 40 or 50. You'll start to notice when you get to 30, maybe it'll take you until you get to 40, that you will start finding ditto that have imposter, their hidden ability, and you'll know because they'll transform as soon as they hit, to, hit the field. They don't have to be alive for a, a turn first. And that's when you know you're starting to get into the good range. You're starting to find hidden ability Pokemon. But in my case, I'm gonna try and see if I can get to 50 no matter what. See how long that takes. It can be a bit time consuming. Again, this does require patience, but using this strategy, it's ridiculously easy. You pretty much just have to sit back and rack up the, the counts. So much easier than, for example, Poke Radar chaining in previous generations. And Ditto chaining, I would say, is with this method is even simpler than any other kind of SOS chaining. I have not yet chained for Shiny, but I've chained for Eevee training, and I can tell you that it gets pretty frustrating. Now, Ditto can be more annoying because they transform, but yada yada. We have this system, suffice it to say, just keep going like this. Okay, so that was number five, and this should be number, this is number six. Yeah, so we're, we're making good progress here. Again, keep doing this. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going here. I won't bore you guys with the whole involved process, and I also don't want to use up infinite... Oh, Munchlax learned chip, away. chip away. I better make sure it forgets that <laughs> before I do this again. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and cut away now because I don't want to bother you with this. Also, I don't want this video to be ridiculously huge and taking up a giant amount of space on my hard drive. So I'm just gonna cut until I get to a chain of 50, and I'll catch the ditto and we'll check it out, and hopefully it has really good IVs. So I will see you later. Okay, this should be ditto number 50. And honestly, it didn't really take that long. I would say it took, I'm not 100% sure, but I would say it took less than an hour, which to chain 50, that's not bad at all. And again, pretty easy. There were a couple times where Ditto was kind of stally, not calling for help. So if you want to speed things up a little bit more, you can get rid of battle animations. You can turn them to off. Um, I would recommend... I mean, it won't make that big of a difference if you're doing this method, because not a whole lot of attacks will be succeeding. But, you know, it saves a little bit of time here and there. Also, I did end up having to use a Lepa Berry on uh, Tapu Lele, because Tapu Lele only has... 45 PP worth of KOing moves. I could have switched to another Pokemon, but I thought, eh, I might as well use a Lepaberry. I have plenty of them. Which, another thing, if you're gonna use this method, just so you, just be sure you have a stock of them. Like, I would, I went to the Pokepelago. If you open up the Isle of Plenty, you can just plant some Lepaberries so you can have a little stock of them, just in case, you know, so you can also use them when you see fit and have some left over for when you're doing chaining like this. Okay, so now, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna... This thing's gonna transform into me. By the way, I I only found three imposter ditto this whole time. Interestingly enough, I found one really early, my 16th encounter. Then I didn't find another one until my 39th, and then and again at my 44th encounter. So even when you get a high chain, they're still pretty rare to find a hidden ability Pokemon, which is interesting. It's worth noting that you have to be pretty patient for that. But I did get one at 16. So the question is, do I want to KO... I'll just KO the the Munchlax Ditto. I'll let the other Ditto transform into me so you can see how ridiculous it can be because the Ditto, you're in a speed tie with the Ditto, but if it's holding Quick Powder, it will outspeed you pretty much every time, I guess, like as it raises Ditto's speed. So that's kind of a annoying to deal with, especially this thing will have, and it's gonna call for help at full health. Great job. It didn't work though, so we're good for now. So, let's go ahead and do Nature's Madness on this thing. It's gonna do Nature's Madness on us. That's another reason why having it transform into Tapu Lele is annoying. Because it gets- it just uses Nature's Madness over and over again until you're in KO range, and then it tries to KO you. So, this thing's at half health. I think I might try throwing a ball now. 
Assuming it doesn't actually get help, it got help. It got help. So, with this one being number 51, I guess I should go after that one. I mean, you could end up in an endless string of these if you're not careful, but I might as well keep going. I don't want- I want to just catch the ditto, though, and see- see what's up. See what kind it is, what IVs it has. I'm gonna call for health at full- help at full health. This is where the adrenaline orb will start to betray you a little bit. It's like, okay, I want the chaining to stop now, please. The other thing to be careful about, Nature's Madness is not 100% accurate. So, occasionally you'll use a PP from missing. And yeah, I think a lot of these ditto, especially the more you chain, 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 I think the higher chance of holding a Bright Powder they'll have. So we're gonna go for an Ultra Ball, which should be enough. I don't think I have any Timer Balls, which should also be very effective if you're gonna do this chaining, because you'll necessarily be using a lot of turns. Shouldn't be that hard to catch even though it transformed into a guardian deity. We caught the ditto. So, that was a chain of 51 then, I guess. That was the 51st ditto. Not counting the first ditto. That, I kind of count that as the zeroth ditto. This is the 51st SOS chain ditto. And you can see it's, it's added to our party, but we have to go over to the PC, actually, if we want to check the IVs, which is what we're gonna do. Hopefully we got a good one. If not, I have a four perfect IV ditto that we can work with. But we'll see. We'll see how lucky we got. I'm gonna go ahead and judge. And we got a five perfect IV- no, four- it's still four perfect IVs, sorry. But attack is almost perfect, so that's- that's pretty good. And speed is not good at all. However, this will be quite good for the more lull that we're gonna train. Because attack- physical attack and speed are not gonna be necessities for more lull. The way that I- I see her being run. So, this will be good. I'll take this ditto. I'm gonna mark down. I'm gonna use this marking system that I I heard from uh, I forget who who showed me how to use this. Basically you do the markings and the first one is HP. This one's attack This one is defense special attack special defense speed and you put a marking on each one. That's perfect Just for quick reference. Although this is pretty quick reference now, too. Anyway, uh, the other thing my munchlax ended up learning a lot of moves while we were while we were training here because I had the experience share on. That's another thing, if you don't want to waste time, probably turn the experience share off, although once you're in the battle, it's kind of whatever. And turn battle animations off if you want to save as much time as possible. And also, I, I'm i going to make sure that I delete the other moves off of this Munchlax as soon as I can, because just in case I want to use them again, maybe try for a 6 IV ditto. I mean, this, this is only a 4 IV ditto, but it's almost a 5 IV ditto really close to five IV, five perfect IVs. Um, and this is enough to work with, because again, working with just the four IV ditto and breeding my way up, I managed to have this five IV, it was a Vulpix at the time, a five IV Poplio. Actually, I found, this one's like a four and a half perfect IV Vulpix, a five perfect IV Vulpix, another five perfect IV Vulpix, and another five perfect IV Vulpix. So, it takes some time, but even with just four perfect IVs, you can kind of work your way up. But I'll be explaining that in the next episode. The next episode in this series is going to focus on, now we've got the Ditto with really good IVs. It's got perfect IVs in all the important stuff that Morlo is going to need. So next we're going to work on breeding for perfect IVs. And we're going to see if we can get this Morlo with four, four or five perfect IVs. Not this one in particular, but one similar to it. And um, we're gonna try to get it with this nature that this Morlul has, which is what, sassy nature? Because I think it might not be the most ideal nature, but I think it's a pretty good one. So we're gonna keep that one. I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. And that's gonna do it for this episode. So guys, if you like this series, go ahead and leave a like, leave a comment with other what other stuff you'd like to see. Basically, for starters, I'm just gonna work on this Morlul. We're, we're doing the, we got the perfect IV ditto. We're gonna breed for perfect IVs on the Morlul. And then the episode after that, we're going to do EV training on the more lull and working on the moveset and everything like that. So that's going to be the plan for now. And then I'll do more, like, I'll do different topics in later videos. But leave a comment to let me know what you'd like to see. Also, subscribe if you want to stay updated on these videos. Also, if you like to follow me on social media and elsewhere, like my page on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and follow me on Twitch. 
I haven't streamed in a week or so, but I will get back on track with that. We might do some more chaining like this, like for shinies or something, I don't know. Wi-Fi battles for sure. Anyway, that's gonna do it, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you on the next episode of Pokemon Sun and Moon How-To Competitive.